Technology is very exciting at this time in our lives. And 100 years ago, I don't believe that people could have imagined that we would be talking on phones that weren't connected, let alone GPS systems guiding us in our cars. And I also don't think that we can imagine 100 years from now what technology is going to be doing in our daily lives. But what I would like to imagine is that technology is going to be used not only for what it can do on a return on investment, but also for what it can do from a return on humanity and how technology will be enabling social good and making things better for the people and the planet. Now, my early days of technology started at Hewlett Packard, and as you can see, other things have changed besides technology, including <laughs> this kind of moldy perm thing that I had going on. But anyhow, the first, um, my first experience with technology was working as a cost accountant. I thought I wanted to be an accountant, and it was between my junior and or my sophomore and junior year at HE. And so all summer long, I was adding debits and credits, and it was very manual. There wasn't systems to do it automatically, but a system came out, and the IT department tried to get the accountants to use it. They were very skeptical. But I was like, I, I can't keep doing this. It's so boring. So I implemented the, the system with what I was doing and you know, gained a lot of productivity, had a lot of um, much more accuracy in what I was doing, and I fell in love with technology. The next summer, I uh, took some programming classes and, and, and changed my major from not just business to also computer science and became a computer programmer and began working in, in the business computing area. And I remember that summer thinking, I can't believe they're paying me to do this. I just enjoyed it so much. So I carried on with my, my career in technology. I was able to do many different things. I did every job in, in IT. I managed every job in IT, and then I started managing bigger and bigger organizations. And what I found was I not only had a love for technology, I also had a love for transformation. So I became a regional manager and eventually a global manager, and I was really working on the technology for computer support or customer support and also just really transforming things to make them more efficient, make them everything you know, from a cost, from an efficiency standpoint and eventually became the vice president in charge of a global organization that spanned over 100 locations across the world. But something started to shift about six years ago, and I started thinking, you know, this is really wonderful. I've broken through the glass ceiling. I've enjoyed my career immensely, loved working at HP, every minute of it, just very challenging, amazing people. But what I started discovering was I really was missing something. I wanted something more purposeful. I wanted to do something that really made a difference. So I made a decision to, to leave HP after 29 years, and it was a bit like jumping off a cliff in a free fall. I mean, here I'd been in this career. I didn't really know exactly what I was going to do. And lo and behold, I found that I did have wings and that there was a life after my corporate world. So the first thing I did was I went with my husband to a trip to Scotland, and we hiked the West Highland Way. I will mention that I'd been a traveling executive for many years, so I wasn't in very good shape. And we did 96 miles in seven days. Mm -hmm. So one of my first discoveries was I really needed to get in shape. <laughs> but um, along with that, I just started doing a lot of self-reflection. It was like a 96-mile meditation of, you know, what do I want with my life? What do I want to be doing for the next part of my journey? And then I decided I wanted to go to India and do a little bit deeper meditation and, and just experience the culture. I'd been to India many times as a, as a business on business, but I'd never been there just to immerse myself in the culture. So I started a blog before I left home, and it was called Someday Has Come, so my friends and family could follow my journey. I took cooking classes. I took art classes from family that, that I became very, very close with, just a really um, great experience. And then I spent 10 days in an ashram and did the whole silent meditation. And every day we woke up, and we were doing uh, yoga and then meditation and then two hours of seva, which is service. And we would do all kinds of things, cleaning pots that were this big because it was a huge, very, very large organization um, structure there. And um, one day I was assigned to sit on the ground uh, at a table with a bunch of other Indian women around it and sort mustard seeds, uh, a pile this high, I mean millions of mustard seeds, to find which ones were stones and which ones were mustard seeds. 
And it was just such a profound experience spending every day two hours doing something that was helping something else in the world. And what I discovered during that time is that my purpose was really to be in service and to that everything that I do needs to be of a greater purpose, not just what the task is, but doing something better. So I went off and came back, and I wrote a book on diversity and leadership. I had a lot of experience about culture and, and had a real passion for that. I also uh, led a project with some other folks to do a documentary about teens and substance abuse, which won an Emmy, which was very, very cool because it's being shown across the nation and helping lots of people. And now I'm a co-founder, CEO, and president of a startup company, and our mission is to amplify the power of inspiration to uplift humanity. And I feel the connection between finding what I find purposeful and my background in technology is just a very amazing place to be right now. Now, there are a lot of technologies in the world that are doing great good. So this is a, an application called Jamband. It's, it's integrating music. People can play music with the touch of a finger. It's helping people that have limited mobility actually do engage in music in a new way. There's microfinancing um, out in places like Africa where people can buy goods, then sell them to their clients and pay back a micro loan all in the span of one day. Um, there's protein folding where basically they have gamers engaged in games without any knowledge of medicine, but these games are designed to help them match patterns and accelerate science. Just amazing things. Uh, this is my mom. She's engaged in social media with being connected. So it's helping us stay connected and feel connected uh, across the, the, you know, the globe with friends and family. And um, she's a gamer also. She plays words with friends and stays connected with um, people that she loves. You know, technology is just helping us on so many ways. We have online courses that people can take when people couldn't get away from work or they're too distributed from where they, they can even have access to education. They can now collaborate across the internet. It's helping people learn in various ways that they didn't have access to before. So technology is extremely powerful. And, you know, there are a lot of really well done, really great things going on from a social good standpoint, but it's just nearly not enough. And right now, technology is accelerating at such an extreme rate that we need to take and harness that technology and look at how can it do something for people? How can it do something for social good? What can we do to take the amazing discoveries that are being made and weight those against what we have in terms of challenges in our world? And so not just looking at the technology and, and its application in a business transaction sense, but in a much more broad sense. I loved my career at HP. It was amazing. 29 years, very challenging. But I can tell you, the last four years have been nothing short of magical. Being able to take a purpose that I find that is, is serving a greater good and taking what I've done with technology and leadership and bringing those together is just a really wonderful place. And I really challenge you to look at what can you do to find what's purposeful and meaningful in your life and take that, look how technology can enable it, because technology can enable it even if you're not a scientist, there's many different ways that we can do this, and actually apply that to get a return on humanity and making the world a better place. Thank you.